Howdy, how's it going? Welcome back, or howdy if you're new. Well, welcome back guys. We have the Lenovo Legion Go for you. I'm finally going to be unveiling its current state. I'm going to show you all the mods I've done. I'm going to show you some of the cool mods that you can do to yours. So if you've been waiting on this Lenovo Legion Go, definitely today is the day for you. Now, we have not forgotten about our ROG Ally over here. We still have tons of mods coming for that, including, I'll go ahead and tease it, we have a battery option where we're going to be using a laptop battery that actually does not require you to hack and slash and do all this crazy stuff. Um, if you'll remember the Gamers Nexus video. Up next, the ROG Ally and the mods for it are getting kind of crazy. One of the latest ones was doubling the battery life by using basically a laptop battery and folding it and smashing it into the unit. Is it safe? No. YouTube creator CPPC Tech has been experimenting with adding more cooling and storage to the Ally across several videos. And in a recent video, showed off an RGB 92 millimeter fan mod with internal power and control. The modder also added a custom white acrylic ROG logo fan grill for style, out ROG and even ROG. CVC Tech goes over the wiring and shows other mods, like an EK M.2 heatsink on an aftermarket 2280 sized SSD, Damn! an additional heatsink on the center of the main heat pipe, and copper shims to soak heat on the ramp. The end result looks like a well executed mod overall. <laughs> yeah, boy. You'll remember where he did not like that battery mod that some of you guys have been asking me about. The most dangerous mod of them all, if you are going to do a mod like this, a couple of things. First of all, we don't recommend it. Uh, secondly, it can be dangerous. And again, it's a little dangerous, if, well, even if you know what you're doing. There's just too many risks behind it because you actually have to cut the battery open, fold it in half. It's super sketchy. Stay tuned for the battery video if you've been waiting on a battery mod that's safe. I think you're going to like this one a lot. But with that out of the way, don't worry, we're not done with the ROG Ally yet. We still have more mods coming. I will be updating some of my mod tutorials and mod videos, so definitely stay tuned if you like ROG content. We're not done. But this bad boy right here is, I would say, 90% done. There's still a lot left that I want to do to it, including I'm going to be revising the NVMe situation, which we'll dive into later. And I do have some experimental cooling mods that I'm toying around with. If you've seen some of my shorts, you'll definitely see some of the different iterations that this thing has gone through, some of the experiments that I've been doing. And if you're in the Discord as well, you will have seen those. So let's go ahead and I guess dive in of what you see on the surface. And then we'll talk about backplate options, NVMe options, cooling options, D-pad options. We'll talk about it all. This is gonna be a pretty in-depth video, but I'll try my hardest to go over everything and answer some of the questions and give you some of my guidance of how to build the ultimate Lenovo Legion Go that I have affectionately renamed the Lenovo Legion Woe. So here we go. So the first thing that you're probably gonna notice is there is a lot of purple going on here. Now, what I have done is I have 3D printed these controller housing. Now the controller housings that these things come with, you're either gonna love them or you're probably gonna not like them very much. They're very angled on the corners right here. They kinda hurt some people's hands. They're a little big. They definitely uh, could be improved upon. So the ones I had first found that I 3D printed were pretty good. These actually are even smoother because I've sanded them down even further but I was having some issues with some of the standoffs breaking. I was using the wrong filament. So there's some trial and error with that. I guess the quick summary is use PLA plus or PETG and just follow the directions. It's not hard. You can probably find people willing to sell you these, but it's probably easier just to buy your own printer like a Bamboo Labs A1 Mini. And it's so easy after that. Um, yeah, we'll dive deeper into that later, but here we go. So these stock grips or controller housings are very angled. I didn't really like the way they felt in my hand. So taking them apart is kind of a pain, but I will link OKS Gamers video below on the disassembly guide. That helped me immensely on getting these things taken apart and put back together. So the controller grip mod is something I highly suggest. I can't talk highly enough about it. That really changed the entire um, aspect of how it feels in my opinion. 
One of the things that has actually improved between the versions of the controllers, actually the 3D printer files themselves, is the inner structures of it. The way everything is reinforced, the holes, um, yeah, holes. Try to relax your anus. This felt much more premium in my opinion, and it held up a lot better when I was screwing in the screws. So I may make a full video on doing this if you guys really want to see it, but I want to go over everything today. So we'll set that aside. We'll revisit those later. I think it does deserve an entire full length video. So now you will see some other subtle differences. One of the things you'll definitely quickly notice is the D-pad mod. So let's dive back into the original controller. This D-pad is very shallow. This is pushed all the way forward as much as it can go. It's very, very like almost flush. It's not a bad D-pad, but it definitely needed some improvement. So what the community had done is first someone had did this mod right here where there was like a circular magnet, but that magnet's kind of hard to find. I know some people said it didn't stick that well, so I printed it and then I quickly decided against trying to continue finding the magnet once I found this one. This one is one that I uh, had to remove and replace. The tolerances on the bottom have to be just right, so it does take a little trial and error printing this. But what you'll actually do to make this work is you'll buy a kit that actually goes for the Xbox Elite Series and it's this little pad inside of here. Underneath it are magnets. You're gonna remove these magnets and you're gonna press fit them in here. Um, it doesn't take much force, but you just wanna make sure that they're like smooth and flush. And what that's gonna allow you to do is use something like this or something like this. These are the Elite Series D-pads off of the Xbox Elite Series controller, which I'm a huge fan of. I think these feel so good in the hand it just gives you a much more confidence inspiring feeling or confidence inspired sorry english does not want to english today so that will help your controller feel so much better so there's another mod that you can also do with these the joysticks now right now i have the stock joysticks on but hold on if you like the Xbox Series controller joysticks, I have just the solution for you. So you could print some taller ones like this if you want, or you could print some adapters that just rise it up a little bit, and you will have to modify them manually with like a razor blade, and it gets kind of tedious, but basically I was able to take those little risers, chop off a little piece, and then grind down three little slits on the sides so then you can actually just set it on top of your little joystick like so <laughs> yeah boy this is the adapter it's like a riser basically that you could 3d print these are very easy to print but it just goes in here like that and then you set that you gotta line it up just right so now you have the xbox elite series thumbstick and that actually feels really good if you like that rised feeling it definitely gives you a really good feel for different fighting games different fps games you feel like you have a lot more range of motion than you do right here so check those out i'm going to try to drop everything below that i can if there's something that i forget definitely drop in the comments and let me know i forgot it now let's talk about some of the other things that you probably have seen already this is a 3d printed backplate i found the design online so i'll give credit where credit is due the uh, only improvement that we are going to try to make on this is the nvme right here so I did print an earlier one and I'll try to drop a picture up above here. So this is the first one that I printed. Uh, mine did come with one similar to this, but I printed this one myself. And before you see the crazy fan contraption, just try to relax your anus. While I explain what's going on with the NVMe. So the stock NVMe on these runs kind of spicy. It is a 2240 drive similar to the ally drive it's a 2230 that comes in the ally and a 2240 that comes in the lenovo legion go and it's actually sitting over here underneath the stock housing 
Now the problem with that is there is really no room for any type of heat sink. You could run one of these, but it doesn't really do much. I actually see a lot of people having blue screen issues and game crashing and uh, games freezing and stuff. And half the people have figured it out and then half the other people are kind of still in denial about it. But the temperatures, when you reach a certain temperature threshold on an NVMe drive, it can freeze up because it goes into like a protection mode and there will be times where it just wants to blue screen on you because it's just done. It's, it's too hot. I had that experience myself. Ask me how I know. Um, I run a program called HW Info and it logs the temperatures for me so I can see the controller temp, the memory temp and all that good stuff. If you don't believe me about drive temps and what's safe and what's not safe, definitely go watch my drive video. I'll link here. And that's where I talked to some of the drive manufacturers and I got their advice on what temperature range is safe. You might be surprised on that. I've seen some people run the 2280 adapter this way, but then you're still trapping a lot of heat under here. These get really hot. This area specifically gets extremely hot. So what's gonna happen is this last memory chip right here is gonna just be cooking itself. So the controller is all the way down here and if you're reading the controller temp, it might be okay, but your memory temp, depending on the drive that you have, may or may not even report correctly with some of these adapters. So when I ran a 2280 drive like this one, it only shows me one temperature, but there's other drives and other adapters that would show me both memory and the controller temp. So just kind of keep that in mind that if you're wanting to upgrade your NVMe, I'm gonna show you the best solution. And so far, it's this adapter right here where it mounts it externally. Let's say you don't have a 3D printed backplate. I'll give you some tips on how to achieve the same mod utilizing your stock backplate. It does require some cutting. So with that out of the way, uh, this is definitely a no-go for me. I don't recommend running the drives inside of the housings at all. Um, there's just too much going on with that. Now, this is the stock cover that this 3D print design comes with. It doesn't give you any space to run a heatsink, which I truly despise because these NVMe drives were just not meant to be run without a heatsink. You can run these without a heatsink, but it's totally not a good idea. I don't, I don't recommend that at all. So when I had done this method here, I had just cut the mesh and kind of made it work. I sanded it down, I custom fitted it. I had this EK water block, five millimeter heat sink in there, and that kept it really cool. And I really, really liked it. Now, before we talk about the other NVMe options, let me just quickly show you this. You may have seen the short for this. This is a 40 millimeter fan. It is an RGB fan. It did fit in there flush, but I had to mold it a little bit with heat. I may revisit this. I just wanted to do it for the lulls because you guys remember my RGB ROG Ally fan mod. So I had to do this for the lulls. If you want to do it, you'll basically need to kind of custom fab something up yourself, but it is possible to hardwire it in. I do have another fan coming. I'll try to splice it in once that arrives so you can kind of get an idea of what it will look like. When you're making these 3D prints, by the way, you will need to buy some of these. This is basically the little threads that you'll heat press in with like a soldering iron. It's pretty easy to put those in. Not really much to go over about that, but yeah, there's that. Now I'm gonna show you kinda easy way to make an NVMe work on a stock backplate. So there's actually a little bit of a cheat sheet guide I'm gonna show you right here. So if you're looking at your backplate right here, this sticker is normally gonna be right in here on your backplate when you lift up that flap. If you use that sticker as a template, it's gonna make a hole about this size right here. It's gonna be a little bit bigger than you need, so you can use vinyl tape to kind of cover it up, or if you feel like measuring and you've, you've got a steady hand, you can measure it and cut it out. You take a Dremel tool, put it at the lowest speed you can, or a razor blade, and you'll basically just make a cut here, 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 and here and you'll make the same cut here as well. So you will need to do some tracing and you know maybe get you a permanent marker and draw it out. It takes some ingenuity, but it's not bad. That part will come out. Be careful, this does melt really easily. So 
the razor blade method is probably best so you don't start melting and warping it and making it look really crappy but if you make any mistakes grab you a spare skin kit and just wrap it it'll be completely fine so once that's done you'll basically be able to lay it over just like this i might throw a video up now if i have it but if not i'll just go over it again for you but this will basically just be double-sided taped on the back of your battery so there's that. That method right there will allow you to use a stop backplate and still put a 2280 in there safely so you don't have to worry about overheating. Now the other mod that I did experiment with was taking this old school 3D printed design right here that came with my Lenovo Legion Go and I cut a hole in it. Yeah, it looked really bad, but you know what? It worked. So I'd, I'd cut a hole in it right here and we had the stock... 2242 drive and I even tried this uh, 2230 not this one but this is a Western Digital SN 740 very very hot drives do not recommend these drives they just overheat and thermally throttle like crazy I tried putting that in there to cool it off it still just ran pretty hot but it did help a little bit it was definitely better than no heat sink at all I just don't really recommend it. It's ugly. There's a chance of it falling off. Not really a fan of it. So the other thing that you'll notice is the venting is way different on this one than this one. This is kind of the earlier revisions that I've seen, the earlier designs I've seen. This one's okay. It does fine, but it's just not that cool looking. So I 3D printed this one myself in purple. It's kind of the GameCube, Game Boy vibe, but it also goes along with the handheld DIY purple backplate that I really love. So now let's talk about one other thing. If you're looking at adding some surface area to cool so you can allow some of the heat to maybe get cooled by passive air flowing in or out or just want to fafo with something, you can find little heat sinks like this. There's not a lot of room in there, so I think the limit is about 10 millimeters tall and i think these that i got like 12 13. so i actually had to sand down three millimeters off of these i took some sandpaper and just sanded the living heck out of it you could use a bench grinder there's a lot of other options but if you get a bunch of these these are really lightweight aluminum you could get some copper but these kind of get heavy and yeah just i prefer aluminum in my opinion it dissipates just as much heat really in real world scenarios it's not going to make a big difference using copper i've tried putting this on here and honestly i'm getting just as much cooling using a couple of these so you can see one right here um, i have experimented with a couple but i did take one of them off and i uh seriously injured the thermal tape that it comes with so i got to order some more thermal tape so there's there's that mod you can do if you want to do the RGB fan mod, you'll need to get a 40 millimeter fan. You'll seriously need to do a lot of sanding and kind of thinning down the profile. I've gotten that down under 10 millimeters as well. And it still just barely fits. It's really a tough fit and you will need to get a heat gun out and kind of mold that back panel around it. So it does fit. Now the next mod that we're definitely going to be trying is I will be using some Thermal Grizzly Cryo Sheets. These are my favorite go-to thermal solution. If you know me, you know me, and I hate the PTM material that a lot of people suggest. That Honeywell PTM, it's garbage to work with. It works fine, but it's very sticky and tacky and you only get one shot at laying it down. If you don't get it just right, it'll be bubbled up and warped and then you won't have proper cooling across the whole die so these give you a much better opportunity for perfection and it's a lifetime solution well theoretically they don't really wear out and you can remove them and put them back on again these are really good uh, gamers nexus has gone over these devour if you look at any of the major tech channels jay's two cents even they really like these i like them as well i've been using them for quite a while not sponsored i just really think that they make a good product if you have a Lenovo Legion Go and you want to mod it, don't be scared. There's a ton of mods out there. There's a ton that I even haven't done yet. But what I wanted to do with this is just show you guys that the possibilities are there and the possibilities are kind of endless. I'm trying to get better with 3D printing software. I'm really not the best when it comes to software. So I want to raise this up 
and try to make it where I actually can fit my heat sinks in here in an enclosed manner. Because to be honest, this is not a good solution. It gets so hot that it's already started warping the outer little mesh material right here. You can actually feel it all rippled. And when it's at full tilt, when I'm downloading Steam games, it's gonna hit 75C. And that may be, you know, like, oh, blah, blah, blah. But it's not, in my opinion, the best that you could do. It's definitely not factually the best that you could do. I can keep my temps around 40s, mid to low 40s with something like this. So about a 20 plus C difference with temperatures by using a good quality thermal pad, which this is not. And then I had to affix it with some, uh, I had to fix it with some skins. So yeah, it, it's kind of janky, but there's a lot of other better ways to affix it. You can also buy an NVMe that actually has a heat sink already affixed to it, which is even better. Now, one of the other things that I did quickly notice, and this happens with the stock joysticks or controllers as well, you'll get some wobble. And a lot of people have this wobble where the controller wobbles on the housing. There's a quick and easy fix for that. I'm gonna show you. All I did was take a spare skin kit that I had and I cut a piece and I just pasted it here, cut a piece, pasted it there, or just laid it on. This was part of a D-brand skin and it, it basically bridges the gap between the housing and the controller housing because there's just so much room between it, it starts to wobble. I've seen some people use like a paper towel and eh, some other weird methods, but those are only going to last so long, especially if you're moving your controllers in and out. This is a permanent solution and it doesn't wobble anymore. It's very, very firm and it still allows me to take it in and out of my housing just fine. So I think that's about it. I, I know I had filmed this video already. I probably am going to just scrap that whole other video and go with this one, but I might throw in a clip or two, but it was like an hour long. Maybe I'll upload it for the OGs. If you do check out my channel, I do have memberships now available. So if you want to become a member, I will be posting my raw and unedited videos on there. As soon as we get some members, you will get channel shout outs and things like that. You'll be posted at the end on the credits for anybody who wants to be a channel member. It will greatly support the channel and allow me to do more mods. So if you do want to be a part of the community and you want to give back and support, definitely consider becoming a member. There is some member perks as well. So definitely please check those out. So I think that's about it. We have a lot of reviews coming up in the next week. I'm going to be covering some Lenovo Legion Go accessories. I've got a bag from TomTalk that they sent me. We've also got a completely new handheld coming that you've never seen on the channel before. So stay tuned for that. I think it's gonna be a really cool thing to see. Well guys, I appreciate you staying tuned till the end. You definitely are an OG if you stuck around this long and you really are the reason I do this and I appreciate you. And if any of you guys need me, you know where to reach me. I'm in the Discord, I'm in the comments, I'm everywhere all at once. So I hope all of you guys have a good afternoon, good evening, or good night.